All right, so in this section, we're going to use U substitution with definite integrals. Um, and this ends up just, it's a shortcut. Okay, because what did I always say with U substitution um, with indefinite integrals is if you started in X world, you better end in X world. Well, the good news with U substitution with definite integrals is you can stay in U world. Um, all we have to do is make sure, no, that is not how you spell that. I cannot write and talk at the same time. Definite integrals. All right, all we have to do is make sure we change everything from terms of x into terms of u, okay? So we're just going to dive right in and uh, kind of sort of teach you through examples. So here we go. Hang on, you be small. Okay, so I have the integral from 0 to 2 of x times x squared minus 1 to the third power dx. So again, I could uh, expand this out. So x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1 and do all that mess and then distribute the x through and then integrate. But that's the nasty mess. So what we're going to do is use u substitution just to make it uh, a little bit easier to manhandle. So in this case, remember, tell me what is in your inside. So the inside of a radical, the inside of a denominator, the inside of parentheses. All right, so the inside of my parentheses is x squared minus 1. Once you've identified that, we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of u is 1 du, and the derivative of the right is going to be 2x dx. So I've got the dx. I got the x. I need a 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by 2, and then to balance, I'm going to divide by 2 or multiply by half, okay, because half of 2 is 1. Now, hopefully this part is familiar up until now. What we are also going to do is change our limits of integration because we know how to change from terms of x into terms of u. So you're going to come back up to this little row right here, and you're going to substitute in your limits of integration. So my lower limit is 0. Okay, so if I substitute in 0 and square it, so I'll have u equals 0 squared minus 1, then my lower limit will be negative 1. Okay, my lower limit will be negative 1. So in x world, my lower limit was 0. In u world, my lower limit is negative 1. Okay, what's my upper limit? In x world, it was a 2. So in u world, I'm going to do, oops, sorry, u equals um, 2 squared minus 1. So 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. So my upper limit is going to be 3. Okay, so what does that look like? Right now, it's a huge mess in x world. So we're going to bring along our 1 half for the ride. My lower limit is changing to a negative 1. My upper limit is changing to a 3, and now I've changed this entire thing into u cubed du. Okay, so I've got u cubed du. So now I can integrate, and since I've changed my limits of integration to match u, I don't have to go back to x world. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this. That gives me u to the fourth over 4. And I'm going to take that from a negative 1 to a 3, and I am not going to forget about my 1 half that's coming along for the ride. Okay, so if I shove in a 3, what is 3 to the 4th? It's 81. Okay, so I have, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute this too. So I've got 81 over 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, minus, and now I'm going to shove in a negative 1. So negative 1 to the 4th is 1 over 4 but we're multiplying by 2, so that's an 8. So I get 81 eighths minus 1 eighth must be 80 eighths, which is going to turn into a 10. Okay, so it ends up being, instead of having to go back in and saying, well, okay, I've got u to the 4th over 4, and changing that to an x squared minus 1 to the 4th over 4, and then doing your substitution, when you just go to this initial substitution and find out your upper and lower limits of integration in terms of u, it makes the whole thing a whole lot easier, okay? 
So it just, it saves us about three steps by doing this. All right, so let's do it again. We are going to go from 0 to 5. So my limits of integration are from 0 to 5 of x. Why is this the same problem? Um, x, oh, well, it's not. Okay, x squared minus 1 to the third dx. All right, so our integrand is the same, but um, our limits of integration are not. So if my u is x squared minus 1, then what's your du? Your du is 2x dx. So again, I need a 2, so balance with a 1 half. I need a 2, so balance with a 1 half. So really and truly, I've only multiplied by 1, which means I didn't change what it is. I changed what it looks like. Now, let's figure out our lower limit of integration. If I sub in a 0, 0 squared minus 1 is negative 1. Okay, so my lower limit is going to be negative 1. Now sub in your upper limit. My upper limit is a 5. 5 squared is 25 minus 1 is 24. Okay, so now I've got u to the third du. So this is now u to the third du. So I end up when I integrate with a 1 half u to the fourth over 4 like I did a while ago. And I'm going to take that from a negative 1 to a 24. Okay, and this is going to be fairly large. All right, so 24 to the 4th power is something heifer. Hang on. Um, 24 to the 4th is 331,776. Okay? 331,776 over my 8. Okay? Because remember, that's an 8. Minus. And if I shove in a negative 1, that's going to be 1 fourth times a half is 1 eighth. So I subtract off an 8th. And now my final answer is 331,776, oops, 7075. That was the whole point of subtraction, over 8. Okay, and you're done. So I did not have to go back into X world. I could just stay in U world, and that allowed me to finish the problem without back substitution. All right, let's try it again. I have going from 0 to 1 of X squared times 2x to the third minus 1 raised to the fourth power dx. All right, so I'm going to use u substitution, and at the same time, I'm going to change my limits of integration. So what's your u? Your u is 2x to the third minus 1, which makes my du 6x squared dx. So I've got the x squared. i got the dx. I need a 6. So balance with a 1 6th, okay? And now what do I have? 1 6th times the integral of, if I sub in 0 into my original u equation, then 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1, okay? If I shove in a 1, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so I've changed my limits of integration. Now, this one didn't happen to change because 2 minus 1 is still 1. But you've changed it from a series of x issues into y, or, or into u issues. So now this becomes u to the fourth du. So when I integrate, I get u to the fifth over 5 times a lead 1 sixth. Okay, and I'm going to take that from a negative 1 to a positive 1. So about evaluate with 1. I'm going to get 1 to the 5th is 1 over 30. So I get 1 over 30 minus negative 1 to the 5th is going to be negative 1 over 30, which means I actually end up with 1 30th plus 1 30th is 2 30th, which is 1 15th. Okay? And again, the whole purpose, you could always back substitute if you wanted to, back into x world. And so you would have a 2x to the third minus 1 quantity to the fifth power over 5 with a 1 6 out front, and then substitute in your zeros and 1s, you'll get the same answer. It's just as long as we're pushing everything into u world, it's going to be a whole lot easier to just shove our limits of integration there as well. All right, so I think we got time for a couple more. We're going to go from 0 to 1, which seems to be popular for the day. All right, so I'm going to go from 0 to 1 of x squared 
Stop. Ah, I am so sorry. Goodness. Hang on. All right. I am muting. Um. Good grief. Hang on. There. It's muted. All right. So I've got x. I'm sorry. 5x to the third minus 1 to the fourth dx. Okay. So again, I'm going to have to use u substitution. What is your inside? Your inside is 5x to the third minus 1. So your du is going to be a 15x squared dx. Okay, so what do I have? I got the x squared, I got the dx, I need a 15. So I have a 15, so I multiply to balance by 1 15th. So now I have 1 15th times the integral of subbing your 0 into this part of the equation. So 5 times 0 minus 1 gives me a negative 1. Shoving a 1. So 5 times 1 minus 1 is 4. Okay, so I just shove in my limits of integration where x is here, and it will tell me what, it, what its corresponding value is in u world. So now I've got u to the fourth, du. So when I integrate, I'm going to get u to the fifth over 5. So 5 times 15 is going to be 75. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that real quick. Okay. So I get u to the fifth over 75, and I am going to evaluate from negative 1 to 4. So 4 to the fifth power, okay, 4 to the fifth power is going to be uh, 16, 256. I don't know what that is. 256, I think it's 1024, but I really don't know. Times 4 is 1024. All right, so I get 1024 over 75 minus, and then I'm going to evaluate with a negative 1. So negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1. So negative 1 over 75, which gives me 1025 over 75. And when I reduce that, 1025 divided by 75 gives me 41 thirds. Okay, so my answer is 41 thirds. You cannot see where I am. All right. Let's do another one. Okay. So I have going from 0 to 1 of x times the square root of 27x squared plus 9 dx, which I'm immediately going to rewrite as x times 27x squared plus 9 to the 1 half dx. So what is your u? Your u is 27x squared plus 9. So your du is going to be 54x dx. So I got the x, I got the dx, I need the 54. So I need 54 balance with a 54. So now I've got 1 54th going from 0, so come back to this equation, 27 times 0 plus 9 is 9, okay? 27 times 1 plus 9 is 36. And that's going to be a u to the 1 half du. All right? So now when I integrate, I get u to the 3 halves, over 3 halves means times 2 thirds, okay? So I'm going to have a 2 thirds times a 54. So I'm going to go ahead and start reducing this thing down now. So 2 divided by 54 is 127th. Why didn't I know that? Times 1 third gives me 181st, okay? So all of this mess right here just turned into a 181st. And I'm going to evaluate from 9 to 36. Okay, so remember, I'm going to do the 1 half first, which is the square root. So I'm going to sub into 36. What is the square root of 36? The square root of 36 is 6. What is 6 to the third? 6 to the third is 216. 
So when I shove in a 36, I get 216 over 81 minus. Okay, so what does this say? I'm going to take the square root of 9, which is 3, and then raise it to the third power, which is 27. So I get 27 over 81. So 216 minus 27 is 189 over 81 gives me 7 thirds. Okay, so I end up with 189 over 81, which reduces to 7 thirds. Okay, so we'll finish this up in another video.